Hey guys, it's uh, next day and we're going to be working on the van uh, with that bunk heater install. Uh, so today I'm going to remove the seat and uh, mark underneath there and hopefully get that hole cut. I'm a, a little scared about doing that. I, last thing I want to do is cut the hole wrong and then I'm going to be in a world of trouble. So um, I kind of felt this way when we did the uh, Max Air fan on the roof and also when we did the uh, bunk window on the side of the van too. So um, hopefully this will go well. So first thing we got to do is get that seat off uh, and the seat belt's got to come off uh, first before we can yank that seat. Okay, the first thing you want to do is take off that uh, little cover here. It just pops off. Get a T47 Torx bit and remove the seat belt. It's going to come around here and just take that out and then um, we're going to take off the seat. But I have a swivel seat on here, a plate, so that's also going to have to come off. All right, let's get started on this beautiful Sunday morning. I'm not sure what uh, swivel seat you guys have. We have the Amazing Auto uh, seat from, um, I think it's SprinterSwivel.com. But uh, you take a 13 millimeter socket and a wrench to remove the seat off of these, off of this uh, plate. And it's always a good idea too, so you don't lose all your nuts and bolts. To get a magnetic uh, bowl and just throw them in there. You can do that with your uh, bits too. Make sure you don't drop anything. So that will... Uh, will come out once I get the uh, other three out when I lift it up then I can pull the bolts out. I remember putting this in it was kind of a pain in the butt but like I said depending on you, what seat you have from what company maybe a little bit different. All right let me finish this up. Probably a good idea too. take a marker like this crayon and mark the location of the bolt because there are several holes in here. So you don't forget just to be on the safe side i'm going to do that and hopefully i don't wipe them off accidentally later okay one thing i want to show you guys make sure you take out that uh bolt there and disconnect that wire connector that's for the uh airbag it's a seven millimeter this is a passenger side detection for the airbag. So make sure you plug that back in too when you go to put this back together. Uh, so the seat's off. Now I just got to remove the uh, um, swivel plate. Okay, let me get that done. So I got the uh, swivel off. So this is what we're looking at here. Now I got to find a place to put this jack. And... Um, to do something with my RCA jacks to the subwoofer. So make that nice and neat in there hopefully. I got enough here I can move that subwoofer way in the back but that's for another day. Uh, some people said it's probably easier to remove the pedestal. I'm gonna think about that here for a minute and see if that's what I'm gonna do. Okay everything's off. I took the jack out. The only thing I never saw in any of the videos is how you got the studs out of here that hold the plate for the jack. So I'm not real sure. I'm going to try to put some small vice grips on it and see if they'll unscrew. Um, otherwise I would have to cut them. But I think my hole's probably going to go about right here. So that's that might be in the way. Also I have vinyl flooring in here. So I looks like I'll probably have to cut this too. Or maybe I'll just cut around it. Keep that for some insulation. Um, something to ponder here.
Well, I tried to remove the studs by using the two nut method because I can't find my stud remover. However, um, the time search or whatever you want to call it that's down inside the body is moving too, so they won't unscrew. Just flew over our house. While I was working on the van, I heard a bunch of planes. We live by a small airport, a community airport, and uh, I've, I've been hearing flying all morning, but I didn't know they were gonna do this. It must be some kind of a show over there. Uh, that's too bad because I'm working on this. <laughs> oh well, maybe they'll fly over again. So anyways, like I was saying, those studs, uh, they're spinning. The whole rev nut and everything is spinning in there. So I'm, I'm going to have to cut them. At least, I may not have to cut that one, but this one I might or I can cut around it. As soon as I figure out where I'm going to place the heater. Okay, so I got the stud grounded down. Pretty flat. I'll put some sealer in there too, just to keep anything from dropping in there and rusting. I'm getting ready to cut this out. I'm going to use a hole saw uh, first. It's a 64 millimeter. I'm going to cut a hole here, hole here, a hole there, and then I'll take the jigsaw and cut it out right, right there. And what I did was I set that on there. The gasket which goes on the bottom of the heater and uh, drew it out and then after that I'm gonna put a little um, what they call that beetle tape or something in here to, to fill in this hole because you don't want any flexing on this thing uh, you want it nice and flat so when I lay this down on there I want this to be nice and even even though it has this foam on it it's still got to have that divot right here so I'm gonna fill that with uh, like I said some beetle tape all right let me get cutting I'll be the first to admit that I messed up I drilled that hole there I wonder why it was getting so hard because that's part of the frame so that didn't work so I had to cut the hole back over here but it's no worries the plate will cover it up um, I will make sure that I seal this real good, file it down, seal it, paint it, and then I'm going to seal it with uh, FIPG, which will, is waterproof on both sides. Okay, I got that repaired, and I got the uh, base on here. Um, I just got a, the heaters inside the house. I got the hoses hooked up to it and the plate hooked up to it. I just got to drop it down in there and start hooking things up and put everything back. I hope I get this done in time. Um, because I will tell you, because today I'm officially a full-fledged senior. I turned 65, 65 today. It's my birthday. And my son and my daughter-in-law are taking us out to dinner tonight. So I got to hurry up and get this done because uh, I don't want uh, a hole in my Board. So I, I know I can get the heater uh, bolted in there and um, hopefully I can get the seat back in and I can button everything up uh, from underneath because it's already plumb. But anyways, happy birthday to me, guys. Um, leave a comment. Tell me a happy birthday or wish me a happy birthday if you like. If you don't want to, okay, that's all right, too. But anyways, I got to get going on this here. Okay. See if I got this on right, the right way. No, I didn't. I put them backwards. That's okay. This can be bent. Go this way. I don't know if this will fit down there. I may have to take it off. Yeah, I'll take the filter off. I ordered this filter and realized how big it was going to be. It'll work, but it's huge. Uh, let's see. Okay, the heater is bolted in. 
the pedestal fits fine thank god i was worried about that so all i got to do now is hook up underneath uh, pop this off the wires go in here and i'll have to cut a hole here for the vent once i get the hose in and then figure out how to uh, wire up the controller and also to the battery um, I've got this off here I'm gonna run the wire up this thing will catch up with me and run it over there up along there and probably put it where the temperature and outside temperature um, gauges probably just mount it right in right in there so we'll see how far I get today this may have to go uh, continue on another day but um, let me get the hose out here hook that up there and get it hooked up underneath so when I can get a chance I can prime it at least get the wires in here I won't put the seat on yet all right the hardest part is in I guess still got to cut a hole here for the vent and uh, I got a that's for the airbag and the seat still got to wire up the power and have to wire up the control the controller this thing's tiny I don't know which way it goes. I thought this thing would be bigger, but it's tiny. But I'm sure it'll work. So I'm just going to spend a few more minutes on this, and then uh, i got to get ready for our birthday dinner, my birthday dinner. So uh, this will have to be continued till another day. All right, I will uh, finish up right here, clean up, and we'll get back on this uh, soon. There it is, all installed. Got the vent right there. Took a two and a half inch hole saw, cut the hole. So now I'm uh, wiring up the controller and the uh, battery. The controller, I'll show you where we're going to put that. So I kind of want to show you this. This is where it should end up with the uh, with the seat base in there. It's really hard to tell from on top where you're going to cut the hole. You could probably go underneath and in that little skinny area down there, um, drill one hole up. But if you were to set it in there with the plate on there, it should just come to the edge of the seat frame right there. There's videos out there. Some of them are really hard to follow. So this is the best advice I guess I could give you um, but uh, you know you just got to be careful when you're doing it okay back to the controller I'm gonna run the wire up through here and I ran it up under there and then under our wall and then I mounted it right there so, um, I couldn't find the little screw that goes in there. Uh, it's a countersunk screw, so I just ended up putting Velcro on each side right there. So it can be taken off easily, too. Uh, and th that'll hold. So now i got to work on powering this. By the way, we did uh, temporarily power this thing up. On the side of the transit vans, there is a block over there and it's got a terminal on it so I just uh, hooked the positive up and then grounded the wire and um, after we primed it and uh, hooked up the fuel line this thing fired uh, up within a couple minutes and just started blowing out some nice hot air so now I'm going to wire this in behind the counter run it back sorry for the mess I've got stuff everywhere here in, in here and hook up a separate switch for that so we can shut it off whenever we want and we're going to run it off of our delta okay i got the wire coming out from underneath the seat uh, i still have to uh secure that wire got it going behind the kitchen 
cabinet and it's hooked up to this switch right here this turns it on turns it off um, I just got to clean up these wires put them in wire looms got a half inch I'm gonna get all that in there nice and neat um, and then, then it will uh, yeah, why don't we just make that look real nice in there? Uh, one thing that uh, happened, and I don't, I'm not sure exactly why. Um, for some reason, this thing got a nice little smooch in the, the center of it. And when you turn it on, you don't really see much. As you can see, that nice little blob in there. I, I don't know if, because maybe the screw I was trying to put in there... Uh, wasn't the right size and it maybe damaged the LCD in there so I'm just going to order another one I can't believe how tiny this thing is it is very very small it's like two inches maybe across but um, the, the heater comes on but there's no heat coming out it's probably because of that circuit board being broke so I'll get another one coming I don't think they'll warranty it Maybe they will. That would be cool if they did. But anyways, let me get the other one ordered. And when we get that, we'll put it in. And uh, we'll test the heater. Hey, good morning, guys. I'm going to finish up the uh, Bison 2008 uh, bunk heater uh, installation. Uh, this is by General uh, Components. Uh, everything's hooked up. I had a little issue with the uh, controller last uh, weekend. I broke it. This is what uh, it looks like. Uh -oh. As you can see that there's a big black spot right in the LCD screen. This is what it's supposed to look like. No spots. So I had to order another one. And it was my fault that broke. Uh, I broke it actually. So uh, they wouldn't warranty it. I didn't even ask. That would have been silly for me to do that. So I'm going to get this hooked up. It's on the uh, passenger side uh, paneling wall, paneled wall, and uh, we'll get this thing running. That's not like we need it right now. It's supposed to be 100 today, but um, for the future. All right, let me get that installed. All right, new one going in. Hope you can see this okay. It's a one man team today. Roxanne. My better half is at work. I got the 3M two-sided tape on there. As I get this uh, pulled through, we'll stick it right there on the wall. I'm not going to stick it in there yet. I'm going to drill that hole bigger. So I got it mounted in there. And this is the screw that's supposed to go in that hole right there. This little screw, which I misplaced it on the first one. So I used another screw, which was too big, and it went in there and cracked the screen. All right. Uh, I don't know why, but this is happening now after I started the heater. I don't know if it's drawing too much amperage right at, uh, at first. Not sure. I can hear the heater wanting to come on. But there's no air coming out of it. And it shut down, looks like. The controller shut down. Oh, this may have to have a dedicated uh, power supply. So I turned the lights off. And then I heard the heater come up. 
but then I heard it slow down and see if anything's coming out. Nope. No error code. Okay, the fan's coming on. And now that's flashing. Well, I also bought the uh, analog controller. I'm going to go get that and plug that in. See what happens. So apparently... Um... You can't run this power off our EcoFlow Delta. It, j it draws like 15 watts to start. And I think that uh, AC, uh, is it AC or DC? can't remember. The 12-volt uh, plug, I think, is only rated at 10 amps. So when it starts up, it draws way too much. So I got it temporarily hooked up to the side of the driver's seat where there is an access a pin there in the battery. And then I just grounded the wire and the heater is coming it's coming on it, yeah it's blowing here so I guess I have to run it directly off the uh, off the battery of the van. So what I'll probably do, because I do have wires running all the way back to that switch, I am going to install, on another day, an electric uh, water pump for our sink and faucet there. Right now we have a foot pump, but I want to hook an electric one up. I've got it here. I'm just not going to do it this, this week or next week. Maybe in a couple weeks I'll do it. But at least I've got the wires there. And a switch back there. Uh, I wanted to put a switch up here on the back side of this. I'll probably just do that so I can turn the one switch on and then this one will be toggled back and forth off and on and then um, we'll use that one back there as a master switch but yeah I'm probably gonna mount it on the side of the sink there. So let's see how this heater is doing. Okay, we still got a red light on here on this analog controller. I'm done with this one. I'll test the digital because that's the one we're going to use. We're going to use this one as a backup, just in case. Always have a backup. Oop! I can hear the exhaust. Let's go out and take a look. Hi, buddy. Hi, Crockett. Yeah, I can smell. Smell it now. It's trying to fire up. There is some warm air coming out of here, so it's the burner's working. All right, well, I got to wire this up to the battery. Uh, I'll show you guys when it's all done. Alrighty, it's cranking now. Just show you what's coming out of that thing. About 100 and let's just say average 140 degrees. Not bad. First couple times it kept kicking off an error code. Um, but I just kept turning it off and then turning it back on, let it run. You can hear it's bitten and sputtering like an old Model T. Uh, but now she's going full force. So the only thing I have to do, I got the power hooked up. Over there, I just got to run a ground and then put it in wire looms and secure it so it's not uh, in the way. 
Hey, I just want to say thanks guys for following along on my installation on this. I had a couple things that went sour on me, but I uh, fixed those. So um, you can uh, hopefully get some good information out of what I did and what I shouldn't have done and correct the problem before you guys do it. But this Bison 2008 from General Components is kicking butt right now. And I want to let it run for a few more minutes and then I'm going to shut it off because it's... Uh, about 80 something out and it's supposed to get to 100 today and I don't have the max air fan on right now which I think I'm going to turn it on while this thing I let it run its cycle all right guys take care thank you make sure you subscribe if you want to see more of our videos hit that bell notification and leave us a comment please leave us a comment I'd like to know what you guys think uh, are they are videos too boring not enough information you guys got questions about anything leave a comment and I'll get to you and answer the questions in a timely manner. All right, appreciate all of you guys out there. Peace, thank you. Just in case you were all wondering, if I run that heater off the van battery, won't it uh, drain the battery? Mm, no, not really, because I have a battery tender plugged into the Blue Eddy and wired up to the battery. So as long as the battery condition in that Blue Eddy is good, it'll just keep charging my van battery so it won't go dead. As you can see, it's charging right now. I ran the heater for about 15 minutes and just shut it off. So um, in about an hour, that light will turn green and I'll have a fully charged battery.